Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is my distinct honor and privilege to welcome you to Naval Weapons Station Earl and the commissioning of USS New Jersey. I am Lieutenant Commander Andrew Hutchison, the ship's executive officer. On behalf of our crew, Submarine New Jersey, I would like to express our sincere gratitude for joining us here today. Before the celebration begins, please silence your cell phones. Thank you. We are here today to celebrate the commissioning of USS New Jersey, the third ship to bear the name of the Garden State. The first New Jersey, BB-16, was a Virginia-class battleship. She was laid down at the Four River Shipbuilding Company in Quincy, Massachusetts in May 1902. She was commissioned into the fleet in May 1906. The ship was armed with an offensive battery of four 12-inch guns and eight 8-inch guns and was capable of a top speed of 1-9 knots. The first New Jersey spent her career in the Atlantic Fleet. In late 1906, she took part in the second occupation of Cuba and participated in the Jamestown Exposition from April to May of 1907. At the end of the year, she joined the Great White Fleet for its circumnavigation of the globe lasting into 1909. The ship spent the following five years conducting peacetime training. In April 1914, New Jersey took part in the operation of Veracruz during the Mexican Revolution. During World War I, she was used as a training ship, and after the war, was tasked with transporting American soldiers back from Europe. The first New Jersey was decommissioned in 1920. The second New Jersey, BB-62, was an Iowa-class battleship, often fondly referred to as Big J. New Jersey earned more battle stars for combat action than any other Iowa-class battleship and was the only United States battleship to provide naval gunfire support during the Vietnam War. During World War II, New Jersey shelled targets on Guam and Okinawa and screened aircraft carriers conducting raids in the Marshall Islands. During the Korean War, she was involved in raids along the northern coast, after which she was decommissioned for the first time into the Navy Reserve Fleet, better known as the Mothball Fleet. She was reactivated in 1968 and sent to Vietnam to support troops before being deactivated again in 1969. Called to service once more in the 1980s as part of the 600-ship Navy program, New Jersey was modernized and recommissioned for service once more. In 1983, she participated in U.S. operations during the Lebanese Civil War. New Jersey was decommissioned for the last time in 1991, having served a total of 21 years in the active fleet. During her career, she earned 19 battle and campaign stars for combat operations during World War II, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, the Lebanese Civil War, and the service in the Persian Gulf War. She was donated to the Homeport Alliance in Camden, New Jersey, and has served as a museum ship since October 2001. 
we are honored to have several former commanding officers and crew members of Battleship 62 here too today. Gentlemen, please stand and be recognized. Would all active duty veterans and first responders please stand. Please remain standing. Would all military and first responder families please stand. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your service and sacrifice. We are humbled to have several Gold Star families with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, we recognize the significance of your loved one's sacrifice to our nation. Thank you. The New Jersey moored before you today, affectionately referred to as a boat by the submarine community and crew will soon join America's silent service. SSN 796 is a Virginia-class submarine, and with her sister ships, she represents revolution in submarine design, construction, and mission capability. Brimming with leading-edge technology and advanced engineering, this ves vessel brings versatility and firepower to the fleet. New Jersey and the Virginia class are among the most effective platforms in the United States Navy, and this warship takes another step forward in advancing the superiority of our submarine force. Capable of operating in the far corner of the world's oceans, undetected, while connected to air, sea, and land-based forces, these submarines are equipped to wage multidimensional warfare around the globe. New Jersey's adaptability makes it highly responsive to changing mission requirements and provides the nation with capabilities to be decisive in any conflict. In addition to anti-submarine warfare, anti-surface warfare, and countermine warfare, New Jersey will support surveillance, special operations, and covert strike missions. Thank you for allowing each of us the privilege to serve our nation as part of your Navy submarine force. Construction began on the submarine you see behind me in March 2019 and was christened November 13, 2021 at Newport News Shipbuilding in Newport News, Virginia. Today, New Jersey is tested and battle ready, and we are all very proud to serve on the newest attack submarine. The commissioning ceremony that you will see here today is a time-honored tradition, beginning with the Navy's first ship, a captured British schooner, the Margareta, in 1775. Since then, thousands of ships have undergone the transition from silent hull to a fully alive warship. My shipmates and our crew, hereafter known as plank owners, are in formation and ready. In just a few moments, Navy Band Northeast and the Naval Submarine Base New London saluting battery will render honors to the Honorable Phil Murphy. Would the guests please rise and remain standing for the arrival of our official party, honors, the presentation of colors, our national anthem, and invocation. Ladies and gentlemen, our platform guest, Lieutenant Daniel Valiz Acevedo, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy, our ceremony chaplain. <laughs> Mr. Peter Engelman, Chairman, USS New Jersey Commissioning Committee. <laughs> Rear Admiral Ronald Tucker, United States Navy, the last commanding officer of BB-62, our long last presenter. <laughs> Captain Mike Hollenbach, United States Navy, program manager, Virginia class submarines. <laughs> Captain Brian Hogan, United States Navy, commander, submarine squadron eight. <laughs> Mr. Larry Runkel, Vice President, General Dynamics Electric Boat. <laughs> Ms. Jennifer Boykin, President, Newport News Shipbuilding. <laughs> the Honorable Tony Perry, Mayor, Township of Middletown, New Jersey.
Rear Admiral Jonathan Rucker, United States Navy, Program Executive Officer, Attack Submarines. Vice Admiral Robert M. Goucher, United States Navy, Commander, Submarine Forces. Admiral William J. Houston, United States Navy, Director, Naval Nuclear Propulsion Program. The Honorable Carlos Del Toro, 78th Secretary of the Navy. The Honorable Frank Pallone, United States Representative, State of New Jersey, 6th District. The Honorable Donald Norcross, United States Representative, State of New Jersey, 1st District. The Honorable Chris Smith, United States Representative, State of New Jersey, 4th District. Ladies and gentlemen, our ship's sponsor, Dr. Susan DeMarco, escorted by Master Chief Petty Officer Joseph Calhoun, United States Navy, New Jersey's Chief of the Boat. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Phil Murphy, Governor, State of New Jersey, escorted today by Commander Stephen Hawley, New Jersey's Commanding Officer. Ladies and gentlemen, honors to the Honorable Phil Murphy. Platform, ready, two. Advance the colors.
Retire the colors. We would like to thank Navy Band Northeast, Submarine Base New London Saluting Battery, the Rutgers University ROTC, and the 177th Fighter. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Valles Acevedo will deliver the invocation. Let us pray. Almighty God, not but three, year, three days ago, we paid tribute to those fallen on September 11, 2001, a day on which our freedom and way of life were threatened. Today, 23 years later, we are not only standing strong, we are united and committed as we celebrate the commissioning of a vessel that is ready to protect freedom and democracy and strength wherever she is deployed. We bow our heads in reverence as we come together in heart, mind, and spirit, united in our diverse beliefs and shared hopes to joyfully bless the newest Virginia class submarine for the United States Navy, the USS New Jersey SSN 796, and the men and women who will serve aboard her. May they be ambassadors of peace as they serve as guardians of our freedom. Yet, this crew does not stand alone. In our midst are family, friends, and fellow service members helping to achieve this milestone. We are thankful for the sponsor, shipbuilders, tradesmen, and sailors who worked tirelessly, fusing their spirits to build this ship. We honor the legacy of those who came before, the mighty vessels that bore the name USS New Jersey. From the battleship BB-16, which sailed with the Great White Fleet, to the most decorated battleship in Navy history, BB-62, which fought bravely through World War II, the Korean War, and the Vietnam era. May the spirits of these ships inspire and guide the SSN 796 as she carries forward the proud traditions of the United States Navy. As we look to the future, may the USS New Jersey honorably uphold the values of duty, liberty, and country for generations to come. May all who serve in her do so with bravery and upholding their motto, firepower for freedom. In your holy name we pray, amen. Thank you, Chaplain. Will the guests please be seated? New Jersey, parade, rest. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Tony Perry. Good morning, New Jersey. Good morning, Middletown. It is my absolute honor to stand before you today with these distinguished guests, Commander Holly, the crew members of the USS New Jersey, our nation's veterans, fellow Americans, welcome to Middletown. Today, we are here at Naval Weapons Station Earl this historic military installation that has stood the test of time and defense of our nation and right here in Middletown. As mayor, I feel a deep sense of pride that this commissioning ceremony is taking place right here within a community that deeply values service, sacrifice, and the enduring legacy of our town and our country. 
Today, we not only witness the commissioning of a highly advanced submarine, we are demonstrating our community's close connection to the sea, to national defense, and to the ideals of freedom and security that this vessel is designed to preserve and protect. The USS New Jersey, like the state she's named after, stands as a symbol of resilience, of strength, and an unbreakable bond between our people and those who wear the uniform. Middletown, from its storied past to its present, has always played a pivotal role in our, the history of our nation. Even more impressive, the USS New Jersey represents the courage, dedication, and the unwavering commitment of the men and women who will serve aboard her. They are the true embodiment of our nation's values. And it is through their efforts that we will sleep soundly at night knowing that our defense is in the most capable hands. So to the crew of the USS New Jersey, today you inherit a proud name and an even prouder tradition. You are now part of a legacy that has been forged over centuries. And it is your duty to carry that legacy forward, always representing the best of the Navy and this great state. We know that you will serve with honor, distinction, and bravery, just as those before you have. So on behalf of the Township Committee, on behalf of our residents of this honored town, I want to extend my deepest gratitude to all that have made today possible, the shipbuilders, engineers, technicians, the committee who crafted this marvel of technology, to the families of the crew who support their loved ones in this noble service. Now after this ceremony and this day comes to a close, please remember that while your time here in Middletown was brief, we are honored to call you family. So wherever this boat may travel, whatever corner of the earth you sail, and wherever you may call home, know that your Middletown family is thinking of you. They are praying for you, and they are grateful for your bravery in preserving the peace. We wish you fair winds and following seas. God bless all of you. God bless the crew of the USS New Jersey, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Mayor Perry. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Larry Runkle. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, and congratulations uh, to ship sponsor Susan DeMarco and Captain Holly. I'm honored to represent the more than 23,000 shipbuilders of General Dynamics Electric Boat who proudly worked on SSN 796, the USS New Jersey. The shipbuilders of Electric Boat and our partners at Newport News Shipbuilding and in the submarine industrial base, many of uh, which are here today, created this amazing machine a true technological wonder with capabilities no other boat can match. This team includes engineers and designers, planners, who work to ensure that the welders, the ship fitters, the electricians and painters, carpenters and testers, all have what they need to do their jobs and to safely send this ship and the great crew of the New Jersey to sea. To provide the Navy with the submarines that uh, we need now, Electric Boat is growing at historic levels, with record numbers of new shipbuilders joining our team. They are quickly learning, as others have before them, that their hard work and talents serve the men and women who wear our nation's cloth and crew these incredible ships. Our shipbuilders know what's at stake. We remain united in our mission to give our sailors every unfair advantage we can to keep them safe and equipped to defend freedom the world over. Captain Holly, 
We wish you and the crew of New Jersey a safe and distinguished tour of duty. May the USS New Jersey serve you and our nation long and well. New Jersey, firepower. For freedom. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Runkle. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Jennifer Boykin. Thank you and good morning. Distinguished platform guests, New Jerseyans, and especially our ship sponsor, Dr. Susan DeMarco. It is my great honor to be here in the Garden State representing shipbuilders from Newport News Shipbuilding and more than 5,000 suppliers from across all 50 states who are responsible with our teammates from General Dynamics Electric Boat for building this magnificent submarine, New Jersey, SSN 796. She is the 23rd submarine of the Virginia class, the 11th delivered by Newport News Shipbuilding, and the third ship to bear the Garden State name. Though she's brand new to the fleet, this boat is already making history and setting the bar high. She is the first Virginia-class submarine designed for both male and female sailors. She is also one of very few submarines to be commissioned in her namesake state. To the people of New Jersey, thank you for sharing your 130 miles of beautiful coastline and hosting this momentous occasion. I understand there's a big music festival this weekend just down the coast at Asbury Park featuring one of your own, Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band. And the boss may get to sing about the Jersey Girl, but we get to celebrate the nation's newest Jersey Girl. We are proud to showcase this beautifully complex and mighty submarine with you, built by women and men who never forget that our ships safeguard those who willingly sail into harm's way to protect our way of life. The Shipbuilder Sailor Partnership is a special bond, and this talented collective team worked together to bring New Jersey to life. They took her to sea for the first time, together. They took her to, de to test depth, together. And they safely returned to the ocean surface, together. This can only be accomplished when there's respect of each other's role and full trust in each other's abilities. Together, these two teams create one unbeatable American advantage. To the shipbuilders in the audience today, and to those watching on the webcast, thank you for your unwavering commitment to our Navy and our nation. To Commander Halley and the crew of the USS New Jersey, thank you and your families for your service and sacrifice and for being our trusted teammate. I'm shortening my speech because I wanna give Commander Halley an extra minute. He's the man to listen to. And I especially want to thank our ship sponsor, Dr. Susan DeMarco. Your continued support of our shipbuilders and sailors is truly remarkable and much appreciated. May your compassionate spirit inspire all who serve on this fine boat. New Jersey, fair winds and following seas, and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Boykin. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Donald Norcross. Good afternoon, Governor Murphy, my colleagues Chris Smith, Frank Plone, the Honorable Del Toro, all those who've worked so tirelessly to bring together this magnificent ship. I'm honored to be here. This boat is a symbol of New Jersey, a source of pride, the most complicated machine ever devised in human history is docked right here. The men and women drove this incredible feat of engineering from its first concept design to the welding of its final seals. 
Now captain and crew will take this awesome machine into the depths. As you heard, this is the first submarine that the Navy designed with crew gender in mind. An incredibly big opportunity for all those who call the United States home. New opportunities for the female sailors that make our Navy stronger. For those of you who are from New Jersey, you understand that Jersey girls don't pump gas. But what they do is run a nuclear submarine. Your silent service will honor extend the rich history of the battleship New Jersey, the most decorated battleship in the Navy. From World War II, Korea, and into Vietnam, the conflict in the Middle East, the battleship, we served our country with unwavering loyalty and sacrifice and earned the unique distinction as firepower for freedom. The new boat, whose nickname will be Devils of the Deep after our Jersey Devils, will be honored to have that legacy for the Garden State. Built for one reason, to protect our country and those who wish to do us harm. As the great power competitors threaten our nation, our allies, this boat and its crew will play a vital role in deterrence. And if it becomes necessary, we will switch from deter to defeat. And certainly, we want to thank all those that design that built, that labor to put this incredible machine together. It's great to celebrate one of the most powerful symbols of strength and protection. Thanks again, and may fair winds follow the seas. God bless. Thank you, Representative Norcross. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Frank Pallone. I think it was the uh, Secretary of the Navy who earlier told us that this is the largest crowd of people that showed up for a commissioning of a, of a Navy vessel this year. So I want to thank everyone. It's a great, it shows how proud we are here in New Jersey, Mr. Secretary, to be here for the commissioning. But I want to, as the chaplain said, you know, first thank the, the men and the women who built this ship, those who are going to supply it, and the men and women in the uh, Navy that will operate it. Um, you all know, I think, you can just look around, that here at the Jersey Shore, which I represent, um, that we have an incredible maritime tradition. We're very proud of our maritime tradition. Um, and um, the affinity, I think, to the water is, is in us. We say it's in our blood, uh, being from the Jersey Shore. Um, I wanted to mention um, that just to give you an example of why I think that's so true. Uh, one of the things that congressmen do is to nominate uh, students to the, to the service academies, the Naval Academy, et cetera. And in the past, most of the time, we've had a service academy day here at Earl Naval Weapons Station. And if you come to that day, you will see, you know, 80, 90% of the men and women that show up want to go to Annapolis. I hate to say it, Mr. Secretary, but they don't want to go to West Point as much or to that other place out in Colorado so much either. Um, I know, I know. <laughs> and if I tell them, well, you know, we have too many people applying to Annapolis, you should consider the other places, they'll say, well, maybe we'll consider the Merchant Marine Academy or the Coast Guard Academy. That shows you that they care about the water. Um, but I also want to say New Jersey has a proud tradition of supporting the military, uh, and that's why so many of us, um, well, that's why Congressman Norcris wanted to have the battleship New Jersey uh, retired in Camden, but it's also the reason why the governor and all of the members of Congress wanted to have a new vessel, if you will, uh, named after our state. So this is the, uh, the moment when that's gonna be possible, and we're just so proud of that fact. Um, I, I also wanted to say that um, I think in New Jersey we support the military so much because we understand that a strong military is the, is the only way to protect our freedom and what we believe in in democracy. Uh, and there are a lot of threats out there. The threats get worse if, I hate to say it every day, so we think it's very important in Congress and here in New Jersey to not only support the military but also respect the men and women who serve in the military. Uh, because of the sacrifices that they make for our country in order to keep us strong and to keep our allies strong. So 
This is a great day for us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Representative Pallone. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Chris Smith. Thank you so much. Thank you. And first of all, Secretary DeToro, welcome to New Jersey again. Thank you for your tremendous leadership. Uh, Commander Halley, what an amazing leadership post to, to head up the, the submarine named after New Jersey, one of the most potent and effective fighting machines ever devised, and, and you're at the helm. And it, we couldn't have a better, more qualified person uh, leading that, sh that ship, that vessel. So thank you uh, for that leadership. You know, you, you run into old friends, new friends as well. Uh, I was talking to Rear Admiral Ken Black, uh, uh, Black one, who 40 years ago was my intern. And I haven't seen him in years, but he's here, and I want to thank him for his leadership uh, as well, and he continues uh, in the reserve. Today is certainly, and Governor, great to see you again, as always, my two distinguished colleagues. Mayor Perry has absolutely gone overboard in a very positive way to welcome the crew into leadership of, of, the, of the New Jersey. Uh, and also um, uh, our Tom Arnone, who's our county commissioner uh, director, you know, Mammoth loves the Navy, loves Earl, and of course uh, we all know that Brewski, also known as Captain Smith, is doing a tremendous job right here at Earl, so thank you for that. Today obviously is a very special day for the Navy uh, and our country, a day when again a vessel bearing the great na name of New Jersey uh, will again be out there uh, to defend, to hopefully uh, deter aggressors uh, who are all over uh, looking for opportunities to kill, to maim, and to exploit. You know, in the fall of 2015, Congress appropriated funds to build the USS New Jersey. We look forward to this day when we would have this commissioning uh, for, for this uh, tremendous uh, vessel. You know, the world, as we all know, is rife, rife with existential threats coming from Xi Jinping in China, Vladimir Putin in Russia. Of course, we got the problems with the Tehran. Everywhere you look, there are people who mean us ill. The deterrence that this USS New Jersey helps to procure uh, makes us safer. Of course, you never want a war, but the way you prevent a war is by having a credible defense and deterrence, and this is part of that effort. So I want to thank the Navy for its forethought in making sure that we have such capable ships manned by such capable people. To the devils of the deep, uh, New Jersey's dedicated crew of plank owners. You represent the best that America has to offer. Thank you. Thank you for answering the call. And thank you for being so willing to spend your lives in the defense of our country, uh, particularly when you're under sea, so much of the time. It's an extraordinary calling and an extraordinary commitment. Thank you all, and God bless you. Thank you, Representative Smith. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Carlos Del Toro. Good morning, New Jersey! Oh my gosh, is that the best you all can do in New Jersey? Good morning, New Jersey! I apologize if I'm moving a little slow this morning. I had a very serious knee injury a couple of days ago. And there was nothing in hell that was going to keep me away from this ceremony today. But I'm also a little bit tired because normally when I come here to the tri-state area, I'm kind of in, uh, having grown up in New York City, I'm kind of in a Billy Joel New York state of mind. And you know, about a week ago, actually more than a week ago, about a month ago, my wife said, you know, Carlos, that's just completely uh, unacceptable. I know how much you love New Jersey. I'm going to buy you tickets to the Bruce Springsteen concert in Baltimore. So I was with the boss last night. And I got home almost at 2 in the morning. But I will tell you, I've been to a lot of concerts in my life. And I'll tell you, New Jersey could not have a better representative than Bruce Springsteen to represent everything that's great about this state. So thank you all. Well, we got no Bruce... Con uh, Supporters out there? Goodness gracious, don't make me break out in a song. Admiral Houston, thanks for your leadership of our Navy nuclear team, sir. It's an absolute honor to be here with all of you today in this beautiful state. 
the birthplace, the birthplace, yes, the birthplace of the United States submarine force to commission our fleet's newest Virginia class submarine, the USS New Jersey. <laughs> Mayor Perry, thanks for supporting our service members and their families who are stationed, trained, and work here at Naval Weapons Station Earl. And thank you for all that you have done to make today possible. Governor Murphy, thank you again for your presence here today, and I'll say a few wor uh, more words in a moment. Representative Norquist, Representative Smith, and Representative Pallone, we would not be able to build these submarines and man these submarines without the support of, our, of your faithful servants in Congress. And I could not be prouder and more thankful to the three of you for having the vision to support these submarines the way that you have and bring them to fruition here today on this great day of commissioning. President Boykin and Vice President Runkle, thank you for building these great ships. We know the great shipyard workers that work at both your yards and the hard work that they do to make this a reality. To Dr. DeMarco, on behalf of this crew in our Navy, thank you for serving as the ship sponsor of the USS New Jersey. Your service to our nation has also been extraordinary. Where are you, ma'am? Right behind me. Has been extraordinary, not to mention that of your husband as well, too. And we're deeply honored to have you here today, Mr. Secretary. In this role, you will forever be the connection between the warship, her crew, and the legacies of so many service members from New Jersey. To the crew of USS New Jersey and your families, first and foremost, XO, I'm going to give you a direct order. Please put them at ease. I know that they're standing at parade rest, but it's getting hot out there. New Jersey, at ease. Awesome. Relax. Our Navy families shoulder the burdens of our absence and service and defense of our nation. It's only possible because of the love, support, and sacrifice of our loved ones. And I'm grateful to have had the support of my wife, Betty, and our four sons, one of which is here today, throughout our Naval career, a career in business and now Secretary of the Navy. To the rest of the Navy team, the Commissioning Committee, and our partners in industry, thank you for your unwavering support. This Commissioning Committee was, would not be possible without your tireless efforts. And as someone who actually commanded a brand new destroyer, I know the hard work that went into the Commissioning Committee to make this possible over the course of the last almost two years, probably. And we just simply cannot thank you enough. I'm sorry I wasn't there yesterday to provide you a gift, but I did pay for the ship, so that should mean something. <laughs> so, this modern marvel behind me is the culmination of years of hard work and collaboration amongst government, industry, and the crew. The Navy's newest Virginia class fast attack submarine, the Jersey, is the third commissioned ship named to honor the contributions and support provided by the state of New Jersey. Our Navy's submarine force is formidable. Let there be no doubt about that whatsoever. A lethal combination of one of the most powerful platforms available today, manned by our nation's best and our brightest. SSN 796 brings tremendous firepower to our fleet and indeed our nation, providing our commanders a valuable asset which strengthens our national security. And this submarine honors not only the legacy of the ships who bore the name USS New Jersey before her, both battleships, but also honors you, the people of New Jersey. The first New Jersey was part of the Great White Fleet and circumnavigated the globe. The second New Jersey was known as the Big J. She was the most decorated battleship in our nation's history, fighting in World War II, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War. During her 47-year career, she took part in the two largest naval battles in history, the battles of the Philippine Sea and the Lake T Gulf and supported the invasions of Iwo Jima and Okinawa. She received 19 battle and campaign stars, six Navy unit commendations, and at least 11 meritorious unit commendations. This ship also honors the legacy of the great people of Jersey because people, our sailors, our Marines, they are our greatest strength. And force resilience and readiness begin and end with each and every one of you. Our sailors, including those from Jersey, raised their right hands to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, often at the age of 17, 18, and 19. And I can't thank you enough 
for doing that and supporting our Navy and our nation. In turn, through their willing service and sacrifice, we as Americans wake up every day in a nation which values and protects democracy, a nation which strives every day to become a more perfect union. And I thank the future Navy Marine Corps officers from Rutgers University. Please stand for a moment, who presented the colors for today, and the other midshipmen that are here from Rutgers. Thank you for your service to our nation. I am most proud to be here today as we welcome another player to the field, manned by an all-volunteer force of sailors who have dedicated their careers and their life in service to our nation. She will honor all those from Jersey sailing to protect our freedom from deep below the ocean's waves. In closing, to the sailors of the USS New Jersey, you are about to embark on a great adventure as you bring this ship to life. On behalf of a grateful nation, thank you for the work that you've already done to make this possible for the sacrifices that you and your family have already made and all that you will accomplish in the future. And I pledge to you here today that I'm gonna get Bruce Springsteen to visit this damn submarine before the end of your tours. So I'm gonna work on that over the next few weeks and months. So may God continue to watch over this ship, her crew, their families, I mean, they have fair winds and following seas wherever they may sail. Lastly, thank you to all you, the American people, for your support of our Navy and Marine Corps. Today, a third of our fleet is deployed all to all corners of the world, and over 40,000 Marines are deployed as well to standing the watch so that we can live in a free and democratic country. And I can't thank you enough for the support that you provide them. Now, it is my distinct honor to introduce the great governor of the state of New Jersey, Governor Murphy. As you know, as you know, the governor and his wife, Tammy, have worked hard coming out of COVID to resuscitate this economy and bring it back to where it needs to be. And the governor cares deeply about the people of New Jersey, but I know that he cares also deeply about the sailors and the Marines and all the service members who actually serve here throughout the state and throughout our country. And Governor, on behalf of all of them, I can't thank you enough, sir, for your leadership and your support. Governor. Thank you. Thank you. Talk about a day that the Lord made. Thank you, Mr. Secretary, for your comments, your incredibly heartfelt remarks your gracious introduction and your leadership. And to you and your first lady and son who's with you today, God bless you all. Good morning, everyone. It is a true honor to be here today with the first lady of the great state of New Jersey, Tammy, especially here in our hometown, Middletown. We come together this morning to carry on a hallowed tradition. And with this ceremony, we're not only commissioning the third warship to ever bear New Jersey's name, we're also celebrating and honoring every member of the crew who will soon bring this remarkable boat to life through their valor and service to our nation. So to you, your captain, Commander Steve Halley, XO Lieutenant Commander Andrew Hutchison, to the Chief of the Boat, Master Chief Joe Calhoun, and to all the officers and crew of the USS New Jersey, on behalf of your nine and a half million member New Jersey family, let me say thank you for your service, and thank you for your commitment to maintaining peace and freedom in our fragile world. I also want to extend our deepest gratitude as well to all the family members, friends, and loved ones who are with us today for your own service and sacrifice, and a special salute to the blessed Navy Gold Star families. This ceremony is a proud and joyous occasion, but it is also one that marks the beginning of a journey that will take the officers and crew of the USS New Jersey far from home. But wherever that journey takes you, please know you will never be far from the hearts of your family and friends who will be hoping and praying for your safe return every single day. 
and we will be hoping and praying right alongside them. I also want to thank all the senior military officials and leaders who made today's ceremony possible, in addition to the extraordinary secretary, Admiral William Houston, who is director of the Naval Nuclear Propulsion Program, Vice Admiral Rob Goucher, Commander of Submarine Forces, and Captain Brian Hogan, Commodore of Submarine Squadron 8. The members of the USS New Jersey Commissioning Committee, and in particular its chair, Peter Engelman, and the USS New Jersey's official sponsor and dear friend, Dr. Susan DeMarco. Along with the, the leaders who have taken the stage before me, my mayor, Tony Perry, Congressman Norcross, Congressman Smith, and my Congressman Frank Pallone. And by the way, there are other elected officials here today. I want to give them a shout out. I know Commissioner Director from Monmouth County, Tom Arnone, State Senators Paul Sarlo, and Mike Testa are here. One thing that is notable about that string of elected officials, they're from both parties. They're doing today what we need to do as a nation, bipartisan support for our military always. <laughs> Jennifer Boykin, president of Newport News Shipbuilding, shipbuilding and a nice, a nice boss mic drop and Larry Runkle, Vice President of the Virginia Program at General Dynamics, and to all the distinguished guests here today, Jay Johnson was mentioned, former Secretary of Homeland Security, members of clergy, members of my administration, uh, led by Superintendent Colonel Pat Callahan of our great state police. And finally, of course, to all the veterans here with us this morning or this afternoon, now I want to thank each and every one of you and your families for your service, your heroism, and for embodying our nation's highest ideals. We're also joined, amen. As was mentioned, we are also joined today by a number of veterans who served on this submarine's named predecessor, the most decorated battleship in American history and a fixture on the Camden waterfront, the Big J. One of those veterans is the man who served as the Big J's final commanding officer, Admiral Ron Tucker. Admiral, God bless you. <laughs> Admiral Tucker, to you and your fellow former crew members, thank you for everything you have done to keep our state and our nation safe. Today, each of you represents a literal link between the past and the future of the USS New Jersey's legacy. And that legacy is also reflected in the commissioning pennant that Admiral Tucker has generously donated to the officers and crew of the new USS New Jersey. Because it is the very same commissioning pennant that once flew decades ago from the masthead of the Big J. And today, more than 30 years since that boat was decommissioned for the fourth and final time, Admiral Tucker has chosen to hand this proud symbol of service to a new generation of heroes. So we can once again fly at the masthead of a boat that bears the Garden State's name. This symbolic passing of the torch speaks to a profound truth. And that is the fact that though this, this submarine is a modern marvel of maritime technology, it is also a living tribute to the age-old spirit of New Jersey. One that has defined our state since the days of the Big J and frankly, since the very beginning of our history. The spirit of resolute courage in the face of perilous uncertainty. And there are few historical figures who better embody that New Jersey spirit of dauntless heroism than the man who was featured on the crest of the USS New Jersey, President and General George Washington. Now, while President Washington may have been a native Virginian, here in New Jersey, we claim him as one of our own. Because the truth is, some of his most courageous acts of leadership took place right here in the Garden State. Chief among them, his fateful decision, as seen on the USS New Jersey's crest, to lead the Continental Army across the Delaware River in December of 1776. It was an incredibly risky maneuver. On the day of the crossing, the river was crowded with frozen chunks of ice, and in order to maintain the element of surprise, President Washington had ordered his troops to wait until nightfall. Not only no light, but most of Washington's troops did not know how to swim. 
In short, it was a moment of perilous uncertainty. But even still, General Washington led the Continental Forces with resolute courage, and together they rode forward. They were united in a common devotion to the struggle for freedom from the British rule. And in liberating our nation, General Washington and the Continental Army ignited the flame of liberty, a flame that continues to burn bright to this very day. And now, nearly 250 years later, it is this generation's turn to preserve and protect that flame of liberty. Today, our nation is counting on all of you who will soon serve the USS New Jersey to embody that very same spirit of resolute courage in the face of perilous uncertainty that General Washington and the Continental Army embodied all those centuries ago. Because in 2024, our nation's armed forces are not only the best in the history of the world, they are also the guarantor for freedom across the globe. Time and time again, when tragedy strikes and fear runs rampant, our nation's service members have stepped up to maintain stability and restore calm. Consider the, the skyline not far from us today, the, the site of an unspeakable act of terror that devastated our nation 23 years ago this past week. In the span of just a few hours, thousands of Americans were killed, including 750 of our neighbors here in New Jersey. In the years since, thousands more have died, particularly first responders, and we bless and thank first responders everywhere as a result of 9-11 related illnesses. And many more to this day live with the pain of losing a loved one to a senseless act of terror. I know there are younger folks here today who are not old enough to remember that dreadful morning, but for those of us who are, we will never forget the pain and the heartbreak that swept across our great nation. And it was during that moment of intense national trauma that our nation's service members stepped up to fill the void of chaos and fear. In the perilous days and weeks after 9-11, the members of our military helped reassure a nation in distress. They demonstrated their own resolute courage and protected our shores, as well as our families and our communities. And in doing so, they provided space for our country to heal, for the American people to unite together and find common cause as fellow citizens. It was one of our most vulnerable moments as a nation, but it was also one that proved why America is the strongest nation to ever exist. Because it is not merely about the might of our military, it is also the might of the American spirit and the Jersey spirit. In the face of chaos and perilous uncertainty, we do not give in to fear. We join together to lead with that resolute courage. We join together to defend the promise of New Jersey's state motto, liberty and prosperity. And now starting today, the crew members of the USS New Jersey will stand on the front lines of defending that very same promise all across the globe. And your role on the front lines of freedom has never been more important. Today, the world is at an inflection point. There is a war in Europe, a war in the Middle East, and autocracy is on the march. So just like Admiral Tucker and the generations of heroes who have served on boats bearing the Garden State's name, each one of you must now do your part to provide that firepower for freedom. And when you make your way back to our shores, I promise you this, you'll always have a home in New Jersey. Because from here on out, you're all honorary New Jerseyans. You're from Jersey, baby. In fact, to that point, the commissioning committee has decorated the interior of this boat with some decidedly Jersey flair, like posters from Rutgers University and memorabilia from the New Jersey Devils. There's even talk about converting the mess into a Jersey-style diner, decorated, <laughs> no, it's true, decorated with signs from all exits on the turnpike and an old school jukebox to match. So by all, by all means, for all of you who will soon serve on this boat, 
be sure to let your inner Jersey out. Whether it's the boss, whether it's thanks to Tammy and, and Susan's generosity, the handwritten lyrics by John Bon Jovi of Living on a Prayer, will, which will find its way under that blessed ship. And by the way, to any boat that tries to mess with you, throw up that tried and true Jersey one finger salute. <laughs> but most of all, yeah, just making sure you're paying attention out there. But most of all, Keep that classic Jersey spirit of resolute courage in the face of perilous uncertainty alive. We are counting on you, and I know you will make us proud. Thank you for your service, for your courage, and for your selflessness. And I speak for all of us in New Jersey when I say we wish you those fair winds and following seas. And please come visit us as soon and as often as you can. By the way, we have this weather year round. That's not quite true, but may God bless you all. May God bless all who have served, and may God continue to bless the great state of New Jersey and the United States of America. Thank you, Governor Murphy. Secretary de Toro, sir. I would be honored if you now place New Jersey in commission. Captain, place New Jersey in commission. Place New Jersey in commission, aye, sir. On behalf of the President of the United States and for the Secretary of the Navy, I hereby place United States ship New Jersey in commission. May God bless and guide this warship and all who shall sail in her. Thank you, Secretary Del Toro, for allowing me to take that honor. Executive Officer, hoist the colors and commission pennant. Aye, aye, sir. Ship's company, attention. The commission pennant in professional navies began to take form in the late 17th century. All ships at that time were sailing ships, and it was often difficult to tell a naval ship from a merchantman. Navies began to adapt long, narrow pennants to be flown at the mainmast to distinguish themselves from merchant ships. The commission pennant will fly continuously until the ship is decommissioned. We are privileged today to hoist again the last commission pennant from the second New Jersey, BB-62. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. I direct your attention to the ship's sail as we hoist the colors and commission pennant. Quartermaster. Hoist the colors and commission pennant. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> Captain. The colors and commission pennant are flying proudly on board United States ship New Jersey. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. I will now read my orders from Commander Navy Personnel Command to Commander Stephen Holly, United States Navy, subject pupils order number 9580 of 14 December 2022, one directed by reporting senior detached from present duty and report to pre-commissioning unit, New Jersey, and report as prospective commanding officer. Upon commissioning of New Jersey, report for duty as commanding officer. Admiral Houston, United States ship New Jersey is in commission and I am in command. Very well. Thank you, sir. Executive officer, set the first watch. Aye, aye, sir. Officer of the deck, set the first watch. Set the first watch, aye, sir. 
The officer of the deck is the commanding officer's direct rep representative and while on watch is responsible for the safety and smooth operation of the ship. The long glass is the traditional symbol of an officer of the deck's authority in the ship of the line. We are honored to have Rear Admiral Ronald Tucker, United States Navy retired, the last commanding officer of the second battleship New Jersey with us today. He will assist in setting the first watch by passing the long glass to our commanding officer, Commander Stephen Hawley. On February 8, 1991, I had the solemn duty to secure the last watch on the great battleship New Jersey, Big J. Today, on behalf of thousands of very proud New Jersey sailors, I have the high honor to assist you in setting the first watch. So to the great submarine and the awesome crew that you command, hear the call now sounded to provide firepower for freedom. Our first officer of the deck is Lieutenant Matthew Dodds from Atlantic City, New Jersey. The first duty chief petty officer is electronics technician, navigation, Stephen Williams from Queens, New York. Our first petty officer of the deck is electronic technician, nuclear, Joshua Sheely from Oak Ridge, Tennessee. The first topside sentry is machinist mate nuclear, Brooke Adams from Plano, Texas. And the bosun's mate of the watch is chief bosun's mate, Logan Ferry from Bentonville, Arkansas. Set the first watch. On deck, section one. Sir, the first watch is set. Very well. <laughs> Captain, the watch is set. Very well. The spirit of a U.S. Navy warship is the embodiment of our sponsor. Our sponsor, Dr. Susan DeMarco, christened this ship in Newport News, Virginia on November 13th, 2021, and embodied the ship and her crew with her sense of compassion and grace. Dr. DeMarco, I would be honored if you'd give the order to man our ship and bring her to life. Great to be here. One more shout out to First Lady Tammy Murphy and John Bon Jovi for acquiring that fantastic gift, guitar and, and signed song lyrics for the crew, which will rest somewhere between here and I don't know where. But anyway, thank you. So let's do this. Officers and crew of the USS New Jersey, man our ship and bring her to life.
gentlemen, the crew of the USS New Jersey salute you. We are proud to serve in America's Navy. New Jersey, ready, two. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Captain, the ship is manned and ready. Very well. Ms. Admiral Goucher, United States ship New Jersey is manned and ready and reports for duty. Very well. Welcome to this fleet, skipper. We're glad to have more firepower for freedom. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Secretary Del Toro, request permission to break your flag, sir. Break my flag, Captain. Break your flag, aye, sir. Executive Officer, break the flag of the Secretary of the Navy. Aye, aye, sir. Quartermaster, break the flag of the Secretary of the Navy. Aye, aye, sir. Captain, the flag of the Secretary of the Navy is flying proudly over USS New Jersey. Very well. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Commander Stephen Hawley, Commanding Officer, United States Ship, New Jersey. New Jersey, parade, rest. Actually, it's a little hot out. New Jersey, at ease. I got that one from the Secretary of the Navy. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, friends, family, shipmates, Thank you for joining us here today in the great state of New Jersey to proudly commission the newest and fastest Virginia class. By the way, Admiral Houston, you can attest to that. Um, a truly historic moment. Thank you, Secretary D'Artoro, for proceeding over this ceremony. And thank you, Governor Murphy and distinguished guests for all those kind remarks and high praise. I really appreciate the recognition, especially those uh, for the steadfast crew in front of you. Well, it's my honor to be the plank owner commanding officer I'd like to recognize the commanding officers that served before me, Commander Joe Spinks, Commander Carlos Otero, and Commander Jared Smith. Thank you for your leadership and your contribution to this great submarine. I also want to thank the amazing supporting organizations. We've got Captain Smith with Naval Weapon Station Earl, Mayor Tony Perry, the commissioning support team, and all the complicated logistics that support an event of this scale and magnitude. It was definitely a major success. To Vice Admiral Goucher, to Commodore Brian Hogan and the staff at Sublant and Squadron 8, thank you for the years of continued support through the delivery and operations. And also, Admiral, thank you for that gift that I have to wait to open. Um, for SRS 3234, Norfolk Maintenance FMB, Supervisor of Shipbuilding, PEO Submarines, a lot of them are up on the, the platform with us, PMS 450, uh, Norfolk SLF, every time they supported the warfighters, and that meant a lot to my team. Admiral Houston and Naval Reactors, your team has tremendous dedication and support for our shipbuilding and test program, and I have the utmost respect for this elite organization with 75 years of proven excellence. I thank you. There are many, many other supporting organizations that I'm unable to thank in a timely manner, but realize our success and delivery to the fleet was truly a team effort. I want to give some special recognition to the commissioning committee led by Pete Engelman and his amazing board and group of professionals. For over five years, that incredible group has worked tirelessly to nurture a relationship with the state of New Jersey and ensure our ship and crew could call the Garden State our home. Many of the great details to today's event were made possible by their dedication to deliver on a promise to us that we would have the best commissioning ever to which they have succeeded. As you saw earlier, we have an impressive number of veterans from the submarine force, from the battleship, from all other services present today. Thank you for the sacrifice and the commitment to service to our country. Admiral Tucker, your words were a true inspiration for me and my crew. I also thank you for giving me those tissues in case that was needed. Thank you for the participation in this momentous occasion. I'm truly honored. The Battleship New Jersey BB-62 has truly embraced our submarine, also bearing the name New Jersey. 
their team of veterans, volunteers, led by Marshall Spivak, have fostered a relationship with our crew that has created a foundation that's rich in naval heritage and prestige. Our crew was hosted aboard the Big J for a magnificent celebration and a symbolic passing of the torch from one mighty warship to our newest apex predator. And our crew was to be honored to be part of that New Jersey legacy. To Newsport. Thank you, Admiral. Newport News Shipbuilding in conjunction with Electric Boat and more than 30,000 shipbuilders between the two organizations and countless vendors around the country are responsible to construct this technological marvel. Some of those essential vendors, like Imperial Weld Ring Corporation, are family owned for generations and are located right here in the great state of New Jersey. Yeah. Newport News, under the leadership of Jennifer Boykin, continues to deliver on their motto of always good ships. Thank you, Jennifer. That success is also a direct result of the hard work of the ship's construction director, Mr. Bob Bolden. His ability to work with me as the ship's commanding officer to balance crew readiness and the final construction was instrumental in our highly successful sea trials. Thank you, Bob, for all that you've done, and thank you for the hundreds of shipbuilders that we worked with daily on the deck plate to get to delivery. In the program that you have in front of you, You'll, notify, you'll notice that there's 50 shipbuilders recognized as honorary plank owners. That was for their exceptional dedication. The other honorary plank owners I want you guys to be aware of are the prior crew members that served on New Jersey. So at this time, I can have all my plank owners for the prior plank owners, the, the honorary, that have served on New Jersey, the crew of 796. Can you please stand and be recognized? So if you were a crew member on 796. So these are my shipmates that have all transferred and moved on to the next legacy. I want to thank our ship sponsor, Dr. Susan DeMarco, for being with us to celebrate today. It is evident by your selfless involvement and dedication to our community and state that there is no person more well suited to support and represent USS New Jersey in the spirit of our sailors. Although the crew that stands before you is largely comprised of sailors that have newly reported since the christening of the ship nearly three years ago, as our sponsor, you will remain the steadfast beacon guiding the ship throughout its life, and I want to extend my serious gratitude for your commitment to that endeavor. And to our ombudsman, Tiffany Burke is here today along with her three-week-old daughter, and that alone is a testament to her unwavering commitment to the sailors and their families. She volunteers her time and works tirelessly to ensure a strong connection between the command and our families, an integral part of our ability to be successful at sea. So Tiffany, thank you for all that you do. <laughs> Tiffany, where are you at? Can you stand and be recognized? I didn't see your seat today. All right. Speaking of families, any good sailor knows that his or her job would not be possible without the love and support of the family waiting at home. So to the families of the USS New Jersey, including my own, my wife Alyssa, daughter Erin, Margo, and Maeve, and son Rowan, thank you for your immeasurable sacrifice, the care and devotion that gives us the strength that we need it the most. And now to the crew, the plank owners. This celebration, this ceremony is about you. You operate the most complex platform on the planet and you continuously strive for excellence. I'm amazed, I'm humbled at what we have accomplished. And I'm incredibly proud of the culture that we've created on board. Our superior professionalism is enhanced by our crew integration and our diversity. We've exceeded expectations at every turn and overcome every obstacle set before us. I cannot express in words my admiration and respect for how far we have come. I'm confident that this crew and all those that follow will rise to every challenge with the unmatched bravery and perseverance and answer the call, Admiral Tucker, that you referred to. I know that the legacy we have inherited, <clears throat> excuse me, I know the legacy we have inherited from the state of New Jersey and BB62 will carry forward in our pursuit of greatness. Today we commissioned our ship and she is the fastest, most advanced, fully integrated fast attack to date. But as we revolutionize our submarines, 
as we integrate AI and we develop new technology, it will always come down to the men and the women that serve under the sea. And I know that our crew will always answer our nation's call. For this last bit, I just want to come back to one of the remarks from Larry Runkle. If you notice my crew uh, earlier, Larry had said something with, to the effect of the word uh, F-I-R-E-P-O-W-E-R, -E -E and I sped that out for a reason. My crew was uh, at parade rest. They did not respond because, as anyone knows in the military, if you're at parade rest, you, you don't talk. And so he was surprised to see my crew not holler out a shout. That's because they're that well trained. <laughs> to my next segment, because my crew is awesome, New Jersey is the apex predator that strikes fear in our adversaries because we, with stealth and provision, precision, deliver firepower for freedom. Thank you. Will the guests please rise? Chaplain Vales Acevedo will deliver the benediction. Let us pray. All knowing God, as this ceremony draws to a close, the story of the USS New Jersey, SSN 796, is just beginning. We commit the New Jersey to your care. Guide her through your great oceans and beneath the mighty waves and protect her from harm in the depths of the ocean as she serves as a deterrent to those who would threaten freedom. Grant the crew strength and unity to fulfill their missions and let them serve as a symbol of hope, freedom, and justice. Provide a double portion of your blessing to Commander Stephen Halley, Lieutenant Commander Andrew Hutchinson, and Master Chief Joseph A. Calhoun. As they lead, bestow upon them courage in the face of adversity, wisdom in decision making, and fellowship as they break bread. May they and their crew be steadfast as their vessel is strong and find safe harbor in every endeavor. Grant them fair winds and following seas as they stand the watch, giving strength to their families as they wait upon the return. As we leave this place, we know that we leave with your presence because there's nowhere that we can go that we can escape from it. We know that if we go and settle to the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide us. In deep gratitude we pray, amen.